Good morning and Happy New Year. Today is the 1st of January and here we are at the Empress of Blandings, a pub um, at Copy Fawn, which is uh, just near the New Forest in Hampshire. And this is the Tess Valley Motor Enthusiast New Year's Day run. Don't quite know how I've ended up here. We seem to um, sort of be a bit incongruous here and amongst most, most of the older stuff, never mind. So we've got some interesting stuff that's going to be coming along. I might record some of it, although I've just been given this diagram and uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting for me to follow when I'm used to Google Maps, but uh, we'll see if we can manage. So, 1981 to 82, Citroen 2CV6 Spot. I don't think I've ever seen this. This must be a special edition of some kind. Um, it's got to be interesting because the front and rear bumpers. I think they were originally designed for parking in cities. Um, so you didn't get um, car damaged. Austin Healy 3000. This is a 64. Looks very, very um, clean inside there, actually. I think this still has the uh, non synchro first gear. It's a, a Mark 3. I think the Mark 3 was the final type of 3000. They finished production about 1968. We'll see an example of the car that actually replaced it here a little bit later. Mark 1 Ford Escort. This is a really late one on an N. So I'd say this is um, 74 probably. It's a 1300E, which was the sort of uh, dead fancy one. Not the sporty one, but uh, nevertheless the luxurious one. Someone has retrimmed those seats, of course. Very sort of typical modification to do to a car of this era black panel at the back that denotes a um, facelifted one although trying to ask me what the difference between the facelifted and pre-facelift Mark 1 Escorts is well I don't actually know so never mind MGA here I think this is just the 1.5 this original one many many years ago I still got the photograph of it a friend of my mother's restored one of these in this colour a roadster like this, and I actually have a photograph of uh, me sitting in it. This one's a left-hand drive, the one that uh, um, that I was uh, in was a right-hand drive. This Land Rover here, I don't know what engine this is in, viewers. Uh, it is in this viewers, but if that's a diesel, then we can't talk about it. I'm afraid. New Year, same old rules. 2001 MGF. I don't know what edition this is. It, could be a special edition with those seats actually. It's not the sort of very latest MGS, those tend to be on 51 plates, things like the year uh, 3 styles. But I like the colour of that, it's very nice. Much earlier, MGTD, about 1950, something like that. 1250cc X PAG engine. Someone's very, very, very uh, sensibly for some seat belts in there. Another left hand drive import. And no weather screens for the day. That's going to be, well, interesting if you go fast, isn't it? Ooh, a TR8. I think this is um, a Grinnell TR8, actually. We've seen this one before. It's got a little body kit on it. Um, they've sort of slightly modified um, it to make it look a bit more, I don't know, Ferrari-like? I don't know. Maybe not. But yes, they're sort of 80, 81 very late for the TR. Another Triumph here, this uh, Stag. We would have seen uh, various cars that are here already actually uh, because um, we've had a lot of Tesla Valley Motor Enthusiasts um, videos on the channel and there will be many more this year. Over here I think this is a Triumph Renown. I could be totally wrong about that. I'm not really any form of expert on 40s and 50s cars. I think this is a Renown. Certainly it's got the razor edge styling um, of, of the period. Sort of similar to the Roadster that's in Bergerac but kind of the saloon version. Again I think we'll be skipping out um, this Land Rover here. More engines that we can't discuss. This MGB I think is a really late one. I think this is a um, a rubber bumper one originally, judging by the 
instruments and the, the seats have been changed would have been made original. I think it's like a 78 or something like that from what I remember which is nice it, it uh, wasn't behaving um, a, a year ago when I was last filmed it I think it wasn't behaving well at all and this Alpha stood yes we saw this at the Bracefield show back in October that's very very nice 77 78 I can't remember but I think this is a 1.2 Ti if I remember correctly I could be wrong no I don't know um, it had an information sheet last time that's all I was able to know also spotted this Voxel Amiga here I've driven one of these actually they're quite rare now they're, they're, there's not tons of them left and also um, they uh, have just disappeared I think this is a 2.2 CD it's a facelifted one set on a Y so 2001 Have a go in another Amiga actually. Over here we've got an MGC, so the car that actually did replace the Austin Healy 3000. Relatively early one. It just seems it's on the disc wheels. I don't think I've, I've seen one on disc wheels, and also this one's an auto. I'd totally forgotten they actually made an auto MGC, but here is one. Unfortunately, it wasn't that much it wasn't that much faster than um the MGB itself and also these fronts are a lot heavier so the handling wasn't as uh, wasn't as good in some way so not a very long-lived car the MGB GT V8 was a lot better in that respect but nowadays that's a still a desirable classic so I, I was going to clean the car yesterday but the weather was so bad that I uh, realized that I didn't have time so uh, unfortunately I've come with a very filthy car which uh, is a bit of a shame but uh, never mind Hopefully I'll be let off. Another MGA here. This is a 1600. It's the coupe version. You can see here that it's got these really weird door handles. I've always found the door handles on these coupes really, really, really strange. It's a very nice colour though. I, I do like that very much. One of the cars I've been looking forward to seeing for quite a while, and I know one of the clubmates has this Saab 99. That is very, very nice. Beautiful period colour. It's about 1980, this one. But 1980? 1972. 72? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's about 99. It's, it's uh, EMS. It's been converted to fuel injection. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, a bit different. But, um, that's the original paintwork. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. 1969 Triumph Herald 1360, owned by Glenn, who organises a lot of the events at the, uh, at the club. I thought he was going to sell this, but he actually hasn't. He seems to have bought it today, which is nice. I've driven one of these, actually. It was a 68 I drove. It was white with a 1.5 engine. This will probably still have the original 1.3 in it. Wolsey 6, this is a 72. It's a really early one, actually. 72 was the first year for these, and uh, they um, only came came out on a K, and this is it's on a K as well. It's got Rover SD1 wheels on it, this one. When I was growing up in Winchester... Um, a friend of mine at primary school's parents had one of these in this colour actually so I, I think this is a Jaguar 420 it's like a sort of facelifted S type although they sort of made both of them together, it was a very strange um, range that Jaguar had at the time so yeah back end is definitely an S type it is a 420, I think this is a 68 from memory but by 69 they discontinued you know, all the sort of multiple overlapping models, um, which uh, made things a bit simpler. So last one here, this um, Volkswagen Bay Window. I think this is a 72 uh, from memory. This is one of the cars I remember when I first came across South Valley Motor Enthusiast in 2019. It's a really, really nice condition. I think those are uh, Porsche 911 wheels. Right, I think it's time for us to uh, have a little go out on the road and read this crazy diagram. So just leaving the uh, car park. I think someone's about to get a photograph of us leaving. There we go. Nice wave at 
Ronnie's been happy to organise the day. So let me just read this diagram. So turn left. And uh, we've got this, I think this is called a tulip diagram. So you drive along and it tells you how far the next um, instruction is. And it tells you how far it is in total. I think the run today is about 38 miles or something like that. Just sort of around, um, around the new forest. So we go down this road here and then we'll turn right. And then we'll just follow it around. It's probably not going to be very interesting for most of you to sort of see this. So um, I'm not going to film an awful lot of this. Um, I'm just going to give you an idea of, of what it's like. And then once we get back, we'll, we'll uh, see that the same number of cars that went out come back in. So we're following the Saab 99 at the moment. We're, I think, the two first cars in the convoy. And uh, I think we'll sit behind them for a bit. We're just going through the new forest with um, all the ponies, making sure we observe the speed limit, although it's very tempting to go faster in this T5 Volvo. But that's what we're going to do. We'll uh, follow them, I think. Now we're following the Saab. I feel like I don't need re instructions, but because the Saab went wrong even before it left the car park, that's probably not a good idea. So I think we're going to have to concentrate. Ford. Oh no! Fortunately, it's a very shallow ah. one. Well na navigated. I can't even say well navigated. Oh. Let's try your brakes. Okay, we'll get to the top. And try the brakes. Yeah, that's okay. Right, so it must be this left here. Little donkets. Gorgeous. I think they're supposed to be New Forest ponies, but oh. it, could be, it could be donkeys though. Really showing my inability to understand what a donkey is. <laughs> so here we are at Emery Dam. Nice. So to, to right to the pub. Yes. Towards Boulderwood. Yes. Surprising amount of traffic around here today. Do you think everybody's on a New Year's Day run? This is this is a well-known shortcut through the middle of the forest. I've gone, I've gone this way myself before, so. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. I think this is one of the longest bits directions on it, it just says sharp left in three miles. So it's um, I'm at 86.7 miles on my trip, so get to about 89 and then I'll have to pay attention. Is there anything you want to tell the good people today? Subscribe to Live Vehicle Consulting. <laughs> so we just stopped for a little break on Rhinefield Ornamental Drive. There's a lot of people here today, the car park was absolutely full. There's, uh, you know, clusters of bikes, lots and lots of cars, lots of people out for walks. I think that's the traditional thing that you do if you're in the new forest on New Year's Day. So here we are on the Beauty Road. It's quite remote out here, but it's really not an awful lot um, going on apart from the Eafland. It's very nice. Uh, we've got this stretch of road, we don't have any stretch for seven miles, so uh, just keeping an eye on the manometer of the car and uh, we'll just turn right when it says. So far, that seems to be what you do. You just uh, just keep going and just keep an eye on the mileage, and um, generally, the directions are quite accurate. It's, it's quite refreshing to navigate like this, which is literally just using um, a uh, <laughs> it's literally just, just using a piece of paper and some numbers on it, and that's quite nice. It's near Hatchet Pond, so we're about a mile from Bewley. Um, it's a place where we've actually filmed a couple of videos before the channel, including the 1000 subscriber special, which was a Jaguar E-Type, it's filmed at Hatchet Pond. Um, and we just did you know, through the Bewley Estate, so it's a very, very nice place around here indeed. So we're kind of uh, heading back towards the pub now, 
some of the road surfaces are interesting. The camber of the roads in the New Forest is, is quite bad. Um, so you do have to concentrate. But it's been a very pleasant run. You're not in areas that are full of cyclists and full of walkers. Like, you know, most of it's not. You don't really go through many big places at all. Um, it, it's actually extremely pleasant and it's been a really nice time. So once we get back, which won't be in too long, it's less than 10 miles now, um, then we'll uh, sum up and make some conclusions about a very pleasant New Year's Day. Well viewers, it doesn't look filthy on camera, but I can assure you that yes, it looks filthy in real life. Uh, so we've come to the end of the run, we're back at the Empress of Blandings. A copy form. And most people looks like they've actually arrived back. Let me just lock the car. And yes, an enjoyable way to spend New Year's Day. My lady wife was very kind to film some extra footage for me, but you might have seen. We didn't use all of it. Um, but uh, yes, very good. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video and leave it a comment below. We've got a lot more coming this year, of course. And uh, we shall see you again very soon.